G'day guys, it's Trav here from Neighborhood. Are you wanting to use a smart form so that you can show the right form to the right people at the right time? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly how to do that with inside your HubSpot accounts. And as a heads up, you'll need the pro level in order to use this. Now, if you're keen on more practical support inside HubSpot, Neighborhood offers you a comprehensive, easy to follow course so you're making the most out of your HubSpot investment. Stay tuned for more info at the end of this video. And if you wanna take your learning offline though, we'll include a free downloadable PDF in the description below. All right, let's get stuck in to getting smart forms inside your web page or landing page. Now, in order to do this, you wanna go into the website. So you wanna go up to the very top, uh, go to marketing down to website or landing pages. Go to the actual page that you wanna work on. So uh, if you're working on a page with a form, go to it and press edit and you will look like something like this. You'll pop up. If you click on the form module on the right hand side, you'll see this and this is kind of like where you can build out your form uh, on the left hand side. You can uh, edit it. You can do all the stuff that you do creating forms. We've done it. I think we've done a video on it before. If you can't search for it, if not, just hit us in the description below and we'll help you out. Now, in order to do this, so say for example, uh, you wanted to uh, potentially show uh, different types of forms to different people. Now, if you're, if you're switched on with smart content uh, inside emails or anything like that, it's pretty much the same thing you do, but just doing it with forms. So at the very, very top of the form module, at the very top, you'll see the smart rules with a little eye there. This is what, kind of where you want to go ahead and manage this. Now it's like smart content inside emails and everything else and smart content and emails and web pages. We wanna click on add. And then when we go out to add, it's going to give us different content based on what criteria. What does that mean? Well, I'll show you in a second. <laughs> so if we click on the category. Um, there's a few options that it will give us uh, an option to do. So uh, one, we've got ad source. So depending on where the uh, person's come from, uh, what ad specifically, we can go ahead and show different forms. Contact list membership. So if somebody is a part of a contact, so they're known within the CRM, and they're a part of a contact list, we might show a different piece of information. Try to think about it if, uh, if a customer is already working with you, right? And you wanna capture some more information. But you've already got that information, you don't need to ask them again, but you wanna gather some more information, that's called progressive profiling. This is kind of where you would do it and you could ask other questions so that you can gain more context about business size or potentially what their needs are or anything of that matter. Content lifecycle stage. So if you're using lifecycle staging, they might be in the marketing qualified lead. Uh, they might be a sales qualified lead. We might not wanna ask specific questions if they've already been through sort of a process so we can change the content of the form for that. Country, so if you are running a campaign or you've got, uh, say for example, uh, if you're a multinational and you've got um, America and Australia and you wanna go through and you've got the same campaign but you wanna collect specific information different in one country to another, you'll be able to do that specifically here. Uh, you've got device type, um, so if you're desktop, mobile uh, or iPad or tablet, if you will, we can change what it says. I'd, <laughs> I don't know why you do that. You can probably come up with a few ideas, that's for sure. Uh, referral source, um, then that one there is if you're getting referred from a certain thing with UTMs. Uh, the preferred language, that's what the person's default language is inside their browser. And query par parameters as well, then you could add some parameters to the URL, which would then go ahead and change what is going to be shown inside the actual form itself. I'm gonna keep it nice and easy today for us playing at home. Uh, I'm not gonna get too crazy on you guys, but uh, say for example, uh, let's, we'll do a couple, right? We'll do, first we'll do the country, and say in, in our use case, uh, we've got the United States. A lot, of, uh, a lot of subscribers from there. All right, we've got the United States all loaded in there. It's loading very, very slowly. So now I'm gonna go here and now I can change the content of the form and this is going to change anyone that's coming from the United States. Now I can go ahead and change. So you'll see here in a second. So if I click on this uh, area here, I've got the default and then United States. But uh, say for example, I uh, have got the UK and then also um, Africa, let's just say, South Africa. And click on manage. Now I can add the rules specifically, so I can add them too. So I can say people in the United States and the United Kingdom will see the same thing, but I might wanna add a different rule and say, okay, these guys are from <clears throat> Australia. No, not Austria, very close though. 
not close in, close in spelling. Um, and then New Zealand, because they're pretty close. Um, might put a different one on here. I might put United Kingdom. And we've got that there. So we've got three different options and we can show three different types of forms. Now, a good rule of thumb is your default is just if it can't tell where they're from and it just sort of doesn't understand where it is, it's always gonna to default to the default settings, which is the first name, last name, email, mobile phone number and message that we've got here. But if we go down to say United States, now we're editing that form specifically for people in the United States. So we can go down here, we might wanna change the messaging. Uh, we might wanna go ahead and change the form content. So we might actually wanna delete the mobile phone number. Uh, bit United States, uh, sorry, we go to Australia and New Zealand. We might wanna add some context to that. So we might add another form field. We might um, go to, uh, let's just go course completed. I don't know why we'd add that, but we're doing it. We'll drop down in the United Kingdom and we might go through, I'll show you how this all looks in just a moment. And we might wanna do add uh, Asia contact. Whatever. So when we've gone ahead and made the changes to what content needs to be specific to each of those ones in the country, um, then what happens is, is that we've now set those up um, and now we can go ahead, now this is uh, a page title, but this is just an example account. We're previewing at the very top here, smart content for the United States, but we can change what content is provided based on what we had there. We can go ahead and publish, and then all of a sudden, the form will now change based on the country. If we go back and say, all right, well, we don't necessarily want the country, so we're gonna go and bin it. We might wanna do list membership, a contact lifecycle, and we wanna add a rule to say that if somebody is a customer, uh, or if we wanna, oh, that was a bit quick for me, sorry about that. Or if we wanna say somebody is either a subscriber, lead, marketing lead, uh, or sales qualified lead, um, save that. So using the same thing that I did last time with obviously changing the content of the form, now we can go through and change the content of the form of somebody that is already a customer of ours so we could potentially change the thank you message or we can change the URL to where it goes to rather than saying someone will be in touch soon. We can change the message that uh, happens inside. We can change the URL redirect. We can change however that operates based on the customer or based on the subscriber lead or marketing qualified lead. Well, there you have it. You now know how to do smart forms inside HubSpot. Now, if you're wanting to make the most out of your HubSpot investment, Neighborhood offers a step-by-step -step course covering marketing, sales, service, CMS in depth, ensuring you and your team are best serving your customers while developing efficient internal processes. Now, we'll include a link for this in the description below. As well, if you're after a PDF version of this for later on, or you're passing it into a mate of need, then we'll include a link in the description as well. If you've gained value from this video and you're keen to learn more about HubSpot, then make sure you hit that subscribe button below. But for now, happy HubSpotting.